Hi guys and welcome to this demo of a uh, quick sketch study, whatever you want to call it, uh, as like a tool for prepping for a painting, for a final painting. Um, this is just uh, to, to get a good overall feel if you don't have a lot of time to get the values and the tones and shapes right so that you can use this to base your painting off of instead of having the actual model there. Obviously this, you'll see later, it's not a model, it's actually a skull study, but it's all the same regardless. Still life figure, it's all just shapes and, and tones. This is the um, the first video demo and, and what I hope is a lot more to come as uh, my tools uh, get better, equipment get be gets better. This is just recorded with a webcam. I'm going to try and get a, an actual video camera soon. I started off here, this is just actually charcoal pencil and white chalk later on, or white pastel, whichever you prefer, on toned paper. Uh, this I'm using uh, Canson uh, Mine Tints paper. You can It comes in a variety, you can get it in pads or sheets. The main thing with this is, is just to, to get a neutral colored paper, and by neutral, I, I should say not neutral colored, neutral valued. Uh, I really don't care what color the, the paper is as long as it's a, a medium value. And what I mean by that is if you have uh, a, a big grid stretched out like a timeline and on one end is white, the other end is black, uh, if you choose a paper that's between the, the 40 to 60 percent range, so it's like a nice middle tone, that's what you want to use. Basically, you'll see why in a little bit because you, you use the uh, you let the paper actually do the work for you for your your midtones. So as I sit here and I'm, and I'm blocking the shape in, you can see that I keep you know laying out grid lines or guidelines for myself, and then uh, refining those edges and erasing back into it. This this just gives me a little idea of, of placement for for things. You always want to start out very light as well to begin with. Uh, it, it's not so much of a factor with charcoal other than er erasure. But if you start off, and I, and I see it a lot in, in artists that are just starting off with uh, with graphite, they lay down these deep dark lines, and it basically, when it pressed down so hard, it, it takes out the tooth of the paper. So when you erase it's still there and it's actually an indent into the paper. You should slowly build it up, just keep going over it and over it and over it. Um, and that'll ret help retain the tooth and also cut back on the, the shininess of it. Like I said, with, with charcoal it's not really that much of a problem, but you should still build it up, you can get better tones. Uh, I use a kneaded eraser. You can, you can mold it and shape it however you want and it doesn't damage the paper when you use it. And I also use a, you'll see it here in a little while, I have an old piece of, of cloth that I use. It was actually an old sock that I use to, to kind of soften out edges with, with charcoal. Uh, I use a stump on occasion, like a, a, a blending stump. Basically, you never want to smudge it with your fingers because the, the oils from your fingers can actually end up damaging the paper and yellowing the paper over time. And there's the, uh, the blending stump I was talking about. And well, if you have one and you use it quite often, you can actually use the stump to draw in your guidelines because it retains a lot of the, the charcoal onto it. The main thing is, is getting the shapes and values correct. I can't stress that enough. And just take the time and, and sit and actually look at your subject. I like to reverse draw sometimes too. Uh, I'll lay in some tone and pull it back out with the eraser. If you'll notice too, um, when you're drawing, don't try and uh, put hard lines, like straight, thick lines. Uh, nothing in nature is actually has a line to it. It's all it's all solid, and it looks like I'm drawing lines here, but it's actually uh, soft 
shading underneath it. It's not a, a just a straight line. And value is the key though when you, when you're laying this stuff in. Like I said, it really doesn't matter with 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 color as opposed to paper, and it doesn't really matter with color as opposed to painting as well. It uh, if you have the the shapes right and the value right, you you can lay whatever color you want as long as it's the right value and it'll still you know it'll look weird that it's a green person but you'll still be able to tell it's a good person and you know with nice light and shadow and everything else there's the sock Um, I use a, uh, it's not really a mall stick because that's not what I bought. It's actually an old cane that I bought. I stole the idea from, from Richard Schmidt. I saw him, had, that he had one that he worked with on his easel to, to, to basically as a mall stick so that your hand doesn't touch the drawing. And I had an old cane lying around and uh, adapted it for the cause and that's what it's, it hangs on my easel all the time now. I use it quite often. You'll be able, you, you can see too that I'm erasing back out. That's because I know that these parts that I'm erasing, I want that paper for the mid-tone. You have to kind of keep it in your mind where your highlights are going to be applied. And this is by no means a, uh, a how-to at all. This is just, I guess, a, a, a video of my technique, one of the techniques that I used to do some of these studies. With these darks, I, I initially had masked them in just as, as a solid tone, and that's how you should when you're starting out, and, and then go back and refine later, because when you look into the shadows, there's actually reflect light that's in the shadows, that there's, in, in the case of this skull, uh, there's the, the holes for the optic nerves, there are um, other little cracks and features that are that are inside there that you add later. So I'm starting to apply the, the white highlights. And some, some require you know stronger light than others, so you, you lay, lay down a bit more. If you need it to recess a little bit more, you just go a little lighter. You just need to make sure not to overdo it so I mean it's not all one big bright shiny mess but you can see how just by leaving spaces open for the paper to come through you get nice mid-tones and basically it's less work on you if uh, like I said this is hopefully the first of many if you guys have any questions on anything or if you have techniques you'd like to see or basically anything uh, you can shoot me up a, an email over at uh, brock at electric synapse.com basically what I'm doing now is adding a little bit of white over to the left hand side so that there's not a, a a hard edge to that side and sign it and done there you go